Today we're going to be seeing a left hip replacement and in a hip replacement what we're doing is replacing with a metal and plastic prosthesis an arthritic hip. Just to orient you in terms of bone, this is a model of a pelvic bone and the pelvic bone has the acetabulum or the cup portion of a hip. This is the femur or the thigh bone which has the stem and the ball portion of a hip. This shows a replaced hip where the ball will fit into the socket as a portion of the replacement which we're going to see today in the operating room. These are x-rays from our patient. They show x-rays of the patient's pelvis, the right hip and the left hip. And what you can see in the left hip is that the ball of the hip is rubbing against the socket or the acetabulum where there's bone rubbing on bone in contrast to the right hip where there's a nice clear space of cartilage maintained above the ball, between the ball and the socket. These x-rays are helpful not only for the diagnosis of hip arthritis but for planning the operation. These are templates that allow us to size the patient's bone to get an estimate of the size of the implants that we'll use at the time of the operation. While these numbers aren't absolute, they give us a reference guide to start that we'll refer back to during the operation. Just to orient you for what you're about to see, the patient's lying on his right side on the table. This allows the foot to be draped free, which you're going to see, so we can maneuver the leg during the operation. The patient's hip here is positioned in the mid, of the, mid portion of the table, uh, and his head up, is up here near the anesthesiologist. And this just gives you an orientation in regard to what you'll see during the surgery. We've now sterilely prepared the patient's leg with an iodine and alcohol solution, and we've sterilely draped the patient. The reason we're wearing these gowns that look like astronaut suits is that this is part of infection protection, keeping us as far separated from the patient as possible to help prevent infection. And much of what you see today is not only aimed at performing a precise hip replacement, but also preventing complications such as infection. To orient you, I've marked the patient. This is the top of the patient's thigh bone, a portion called the greater trochanter, the neck of the hip bone, and then the ball or the femoral head. And then this is the acetabulum or the socket of the hip. The reason I'm wearing a headlight is that the approach I use for hip replacement is a minimally invasive approach. So it's a minimized skin incision and the headlight helps me to see in what is a fairly small surgical incision. For this minimally invasive surgical approach, we use an approximately three inch incision uh, over the upper portion of the buttock. What you'll see is us to set down through the skin and the gluteus muscle or the buttock muscle until we get to the deeper layers of the hip. So what you see here is we've created the skin incision and come down through the subcutaneous tissue. This red fiber tissue is the muscle, the gluteus muscle, and underneath it you can see the deeper structures of the hip. And I'm going to show this to you more in detail in just a second. The advantage of this minimally invasive approach is that through a small incision and through just splitting the gluteus muscle, the buttock muscle, it allows us to expose the deeper structures of the hip. This tendon is called the piriformis tendon. It's part of the rotator and also stabilizer of the hip joint. And there's an additional tendon called the conjoint tendon just below it. We're going to take these down off the bone and repair them. And repairing them helps to improve function and stability of the patient's hip replacement. Why we've completed taking down the tendons and the lining of the hip joint or the capsule. So this suture is around the tendons, which we will repair later. This is around the ligaments or the capsule of the hip joint. And then deep inside, underneath the capsule, you can see moving the ball of the hip, which we will now pop out of the socket uh, or dislocate. Some of the operation is done by feel, and one of these aspects is dislocating the hip or popping the ball out of the socket. And to do that, the patient's hip is bent up and the knee is pushed toward the floor. And as the leg is turned, the hip will pop out of place. And that will allow us to remove the arthritic hip ball. To remove the hip ball, we use a saw to cut the ball off the neck of the femur to remove the femoral head from the neck. After the neck has been cut, the arthritic hip ball is removed from the patient. Having removed the femoral head, the ball of the hip, we're now moving on to preparing the thigh bone for the stem. And what we're looking at is where we've cut across the bone of the thigh bone or the femur. 
and we're looking down the bone. And to start, what we're going to do is open up the bone by inserting a small reamer into the center of the bone. And this hole will now serve as the guide for the shaping of the thigh bone with what's called a brooch. This is a brooch. It's a cutting instrument that is actually shaped the same shape as the implant that will go into the thigh bone. And what this does is it cuts and impacts the bone to shape the interior of the bone the exact size and shape of the implant that we'll use. Uh, and this is impacted using a hammer to impact the bone. Could I have a mallet, please? These brooches sequentially increase in size until we find a brooch that fits the full width of the patient's bone so that it will be stable in the thigh bone and won't tend to move down. And you can see that this brooch trial fits firmly from the outside all the way to the inside of the patient's thigh bone. We're now looking at the patient's acetabulum or the socket of their hip. And you can see that this is a round socket. This is the outside portion of it. And it extends deeper in toward the pelvis. There's a bone spur, what we call an osteophyte here, which we're going to remove as part of preparing this socket for the hip replacement. In preparing the socket or the acetabulum, we have a reamer. And a reamer, just like a brooch on the thigh bone, sequentially enlarges the acetabulum or the hip socket until we get to a size that will accept the final cup of the hip replacement. And this reamer is powered to ensure that we remove the bone in a precise fashion. Now the final reamer is in place and we've enlarged the cup to 61 millimeters and we'll therefore place a cup that's just one millimeter larger, 62, which will press fit into this bone uh, to give a snug fit without needing any screws or bone cement. This is the cup portion of the hip replacement. It's covered with titanium beads that will help to lock it into the bone and provide stability. Ultimately, the bone will grow against this titanium roughened surface and essentially create a situation where the metal becomes part of the bone. That's how hip replacement can be done without the use of bone cement. Once the cup is positioned appropriately, it's impacted into place in the patient's bone. This is the plastic liner that inserts into that metal shell that you saw. And it's on this plastic liner that the ball of the new hip replacement will glide to provide motion and pain relief for the patient. And this is a look now at the final shell and polyethylene or plastic liner in place in the, in place in the patient, ready to accept the hip replacement. This is the final stem, which goes into the thigh bone or the femur bone. It's again coated with titanium, just like the acetabular shell is, and eventually the bone will grow against this titanium and lock this into the bone, making a part of the bone. It's impacted into the thigh bone that we previously have prepared until it reaches a solid end point. This is the final hip ball, which we'll now place onto the stem or the thigh bone portion of the hip replacement and then reduce the hip, pop it back in place. Hip ball is now locked onto the implant. And then the hip is popped back into place. Now once that's done, we'll want to check a couple of things. The first is the patient's leg length, which we'll check by feeling the position of the patient's knee relative to the opposite knee on the table. And what I can tell by feeling the ends of the knee is that the patient's legs are now about the same length. We can also check stability of the hip. I'll twist the patient's hip out to try to pop the hip replacement out the front of the hip, and I'll notice that it's stable and it won't dislocate. I'll then bend the patient's hip up as if he's sitting in a chair and turn the hip out and make sure that the hip replacement doesn't pop out the back. And that's excellent range of motion and stability, um, which is typical for this surgical approach and this type of implant.
We'll now begin to close the patient's wound and then bring him to the recovery room. Physical therapist will probably see him this afternoon and get him up out of bed and begin him walking. He can put full weight on this leg. Thanks very much for your attention. I hope you enjoyed the surgery.